me. Nothing to worry about here. Just gonna free my mind, I guess. Here we go. The PlayStation VR 2 has been out officially for one month as of today, and I've really been enjoying the experiences that I've been having with it so far, from doing Sylvester Stallone-style jumps in Horizon to getting spooked a little in Resident Evil 8. Oh! <laughs> Jesus Christ, you prick! However, it's been quite the divisive little headset within the community. Truth be told, the headset has a lot of things going for it, but it does have some issues, with a portion of those issues being unique down to the individual using the headset. Of course, I'm talking about things like screen door effect, the mirror issues, and for some, even comfort. We'll touch on those a bit in the video with some of my thoughts on the PSVR 2 right after. Being able to select things with your eyes is a thing I didn't ever think about until information came out around this headset. While I know that the Quest Pro and Vive, among others, have done eye tracking already, I never really thought about selecting things in a game with my eyes like you see in the Horizon menu here. That is one of the many cool features of the PSVR 2. And another is the haptics. I didn't have high expectations for the head haptics, but I'll be damned if they aren't good, and often something that I'm missing when I go back and play my Quest 2 in either standalone or PC VR. But feeling something big walk by just because of the concussion it causes is a bizarre but very welcomed feeling. You can even see it in some of the video, like when I'm blasting a fool in Resident Evil Village. Check this out. You want some, buddy? Guess so. Oh man, felt that in my head. Not all games take full advantage of the features though. For example, at the time of this video, No Man's Sky isn't using dynamic foveated rendering that's possible with the headset's eye tracking. And what that means is, is that the image is at its absolute best wherever you're looking in the headset, and you can't see the shift happening unless you're watching back videos you captured from it. So in this game, the visuals you see here in the gameplay is a bit better than what you see in the headset because the game still struggles with clarity at a distance in VR. Okay. Some of these shortcomings are actually uplifted by the total package though. The 3D audio and the haptics go a long way for immersion. So in games not taking full advantage either at all or not yet, it's really helping a ton to have the other features really complement the overall experiences. What is that thing? I don't think I like that. I think we're gonna get out of here. One of the drawbacks of this headset, which seems to be one thing we can all agree on in the community, is the sweet spot for your eyes is very small on the PSVR 2. Smaller than the Quest 2 even in my eyes. See what I did there? In fact, I'd strongly suggest that if you're new, and especially if you're new to VR, I'd come here to the settings for the first half a dozen times you want to play just to ensure you have the headset on correctly. All text and imagery should be clear. If it's not, then you need to adjust how it's on your head, your IPD in the headset, which is the distance between your pupils, or possibly recalibrate the eye tracking to get the clearest image possible. After a while, you'll develop muscle memory, and you will be able to do it without any of that. Full disclosure, the sweet spot is small enough that I made it a point to come here for the first few times before playing anything, just to be sure. Myself, and I've been a VR nerd since 2016, starting with PSVR 1. Okay, on to the divisive subject matters. The stuff that I said in the beginning that was unique to the individual wearing the headset. Turns out, based on all the feedback I've read from newcomers, the vet players, and myself included, there's a few things that people are complaining about with this headset. Gotta be honest though, I don't align completely with the majority, but I will tell you what I have seen while playing all the games I'm showing you in this video. But before I get into this, I want to be absolutely clear, these thoughts and opinions only represent me and me alone. So with that said, when it comes to the mirror effect, I've never seen it in any of the games I've played thus far with this headset. What is mirror? Well in short, it's this weird clouding effect seen here that's unfortunately a drawback to OLED screens, which the PSVR 2 uses. 
I bring this up because I've seen several people suggest that they're having problems getting used to it, and even some people, prominent figures in the community, say that it's made them feel ill. So be warned with that possibility. What have I experienced though? I've had some issues with screen door effect that I've resolved, but some ghosting that I haven't, but only lasted for a couple of seconds. When it comes to the screen door effect, I just lowered my headset's brightness and that resolved it entirely for me. But when it comes to the ghosting, let me say an example of what I experienced with that. I was climbing up a ledge in Horizon. There were four little birds that flew right over my head, but at the moment that they were going overhead, I saw eight birds instead of four for a couple of seconds. Unfortunately, with that one, when it comes to games, especially when it comes to games using reprojection to hit that 120 hertz refresh rate, it can be more noticeable. However, I'm happy to report, at least for me, when a game does just native 90 hertz, this problem isn't there at all, no matter what motion I'm doing. Ghosting, simply put, is like a double image around objects during motion, specifically lateral movement to where your eye is focused. But none of this is game breaking or immersion breaking for me, but for some it's a really big deal. An example of a game that was using reprojection but then switched to 90 hertz and is all the better for it is Light Brigade, which is a really, really, really good game. And if you haven't played it, just know it's not only on PSVR 2, it's also on Steam and the meta stores also. Wink, wink. That said, even though I don't have issues like a lot of people are talking about on the internet, when that switch was made, I could absolutely tell a difference, even though I wasn't having issues prior. So that's definitely a good thing, and I'm really hoping devs go that route more, more frequently. And thankfully, um, Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2, which released yesterday, is doing exactly that right out of the box, and I do believe they did the same thing for Chapter 1. I like the, the haptic here. Welcome to Inferno's Ride. Oh. We hope you enjoy your journey. <laughs> ah, I got guns. Why does that get me? Okay, I have a couple things I want to bring up briefly and then I'm going to wrap this up. First thing I want to bring up is the cord. Unfortunately for some, there's just no getting around that there's a cord. I understand if you've used wireless and don't want to give that up. However, unless you're in a situation where you are unable to put up a simple pulley system, there's not too much you can do at this time. That is, of course, if you're not okay with just sitting down for these experiences, which would be weird for some, to be honest. However, I would like to say that for me at least, this doesn't hurt it at all. I'm using pulleys and the cord is truly a non-issue for me, and I'm quite animated when I play, especially in stuff like The Walking Dead. The final thing I want to bring up is comfort. Now for me, what I'm doing is I'm using a thin beanie when I use the headset. That does two things for me. Number one, I don't have to worry about sweating all over my headset. The beanie can deal with that. Number two, it makes it more comfortable, period. I rarely have to tighten it more than a click or two when I put it on using the beanie. There's also third parties top straps that you can buy that give it an extra level of comfort that I know some in the community are actually happy with. For me personally though, my biggest drawback is wearing it with glasses because my glasses want to slide and I have to adjust them a lot. And I don't like how close the strap is to my ears, which can make over ear headphones a challenge, at least with my head shape. All of that said, I really love the game so far and the tech and the headset. Is it perfect? No. But it doesn't have to be, and frankly, it never was going to be. There is still plenty of strides that could be made in this field, and I think they more than outdid themselves here from the previous PSVR. Oh, and I almost forgot, the controllers are just as good as the DualSense controllers. Those adaptive triggers and the overall haptics are quite amazing. In that switchback clip, you heard me say that I like the feel of the haptics. That's because I could feel the railing underneath me in the controllers. It's pretty damn sweet. And I also think that if you already own a PS5, this is an excellent option for you to consider. But if you don't see the games out yet, then wait, there's no harm in that. If you made it this far, thank you, and if you enjoyed what you saw, please consider dropping a like, and if you want more, consider subscribing. That's it for me, so as always, keep playing, keep surviving, and take care. Well, um, no.